What's up everybody, John McLean here, and as you can tell from the hat, it means that I've got another product from Surefire to review. This time, it's not a prize though. Uh, I actually got it from Surefire for myself, and that is the Rider 22. So let's open this up, take a look inside, and then later, we're gonna take it out to the range and have some fun. Let's do it. All right, so the Surefire Rider 22. Let's unbox it up and go from there. So obviously we have the suppressor with the pouch, instruction manuals, a little pamphlet for some other Surefire products. This is my paperwork. And we have a spacer. That can stay in there along with the rest of the stuff. I'll read the instructions later. Let's get to the actual suppressor. First of all, comes in a nice little pouch. Um, it is not attachable as far as Molly goes, uh, like my monster can is, but it does have a, a little belt loop here. You can throw that in there. Um, this is on the side. Uh, from my understanding, this is um, for you to be able to push the bafflings out of the casing uh, in case they get a little jammed up once you obviously start shooting it and dirty it up makes it a little bit harder so you take that screw that in and then you can use that to like push onto a table or anything like that case is empty we have the suppressor and the um kind of the disassembly and reassembly alignment bar whatever you want to call that and then of course we have the suppressor itself a very small um there's the back side there's the front side and I think we're just going to take it out, throw it on some guns, shoot them, have fun, and then we'll do a disassembly and reassembly video and how to clean this thing. Um, because I don't feel like doing that right now. I want to go shooting. So we're going to go shoot it first. Well, good morning. We are here at the range today to test fire and then talk about the Surefire Ryder 22S. Um, I've got two firearms out here with me. I've got a Walther P22 and then I have a Ruger 1022 with a tack sole barrel on it that uh, has the, I think it's like a 11 inch barrel followed by a five or six inch shroud so that this will fit right underneath it and it keeps it um, as short as possible without it being an SPR and whatnot. So I also have some Arms Core uh, 36 grain hollow point high velocity ammo and then some arms core 40 grain solid point standard velocity ammo so we're going to see what the difference is between the high velocity and the standard velocity and the heavier bullet and the lighter bullet as it is shot out of the uh, surefire rider 22. with that being said let's get going so the first gun we're going to use is the walter p22 we're gonna do a couple shots unsuppressed and then we'll throw the suppressor on See what kind of difference there is. Okay. Now, with the Surefire Rider 22, first round pop. Oh my God, I don't think I need these. <laughs> okay, 10 shots, a little warm, not too bad. That was spectacular. I, uh, I'm telling you, if you don't have a suppressor yet, you need to get one. And if you're gonna get one, a 22 is a lot of fun, for sure. Wow. Okay. Let's let's do this. Definitely not, not do that for the next five rounds. 
So we are gonna load up. That was the 36 grain high velocity hollow point. Let's throw in five rounds of the 40 grain standard velocity solid points and see if there's a difference. Try and get some air in that suppressor for a first round pop again. Let's see if there's that much more of a difference with the standard velocity solid point versus that high velocity stuff. I don't really hear much of a difference. It actually feels like there's a little bit more chunk to the gun when I'm shooting that round versus the high velocity stuff, but do a couple. Do a couple without the suppressor. And for this, I am gonna put my hearing pro back on because I know this, this thing can get loud. Significantly louder for sure. I mean, surprise, surprise, right? When you don't have the suppressor on, it's louder. All right. So this is the Ruger 1022 tack sole barrel with the barrel shroud, uh, unsuppressed with the 36 grain high velocity hollow point. Three rounds unsuppressed of the standard velocity solid point. Now we'll throw the suppressor on. Excellent. All right. This is the 36 grain high velocity hollow point. Um, let's try the 40 grain standard velocity solid points. First round pop, I didn't really notice a difference. Um, obviously without like a decibel meter to really tell me definitively, but at the ear, there wasn't a difference between the first round versus the third or fourth can pretty much seemed as quiet as it's going to be. But let's set the camera up down range and then we'll shoot so you can hear what that supersonic crack really sounds like. Well, that seemed interesting, didn't it? Did you notice a difference in the sound? I did. Let's go back home 
and let's see how much of a pain in the butt it is to take it apart, clean it, and put it back together. Maybe that'll be the determining factor. Probably not, because I think this can is still super badass. But um, yeah, let's uh, let's get done shooting it and then head back home. So nice. Okay, so the only thing left to do is to take this thing apart and clean it and see is that a pain or not? So let's get to it. I apologize for the complete and utter mess, but you know, it's a garage. What are you gonna do? Okay, so we've got the rod out that we're gonna use to unscrew this. And I'm gonna assume that the first turn is the hardest. So, um, uno momento. All righty. So I just went and put it in the vise and then used a wrench just to get it started. And here we are. My understanding, you can leave that on if you want. So there, just the end cap came out. The rest of the baffles are still inside. So that's where this fun little piece comes in. You can screw that on here. And you use it to push everything out of the cover. Let me see a little bit of carbon and all that stuff in there. Of course, that's what you would expect, right? Uh, from there, we can unscrew that. And the buff baffles just kind of pull apart. Woo! Yeah, they are dirty. 22 long rifle gets dirty quick, huh? Uh, you know what, actually I think this one stays together maybe. Yeah, I think that piece stays together. Okay, um, from here, we're just gonna kinda clean it up and then we'll see what it's like to have to reassemble it. Okay, so I think I'm just about clean. Uh, I mean, we didn't put that many rounds through it, but um, now let's do the reassembly. So we take our rod and we put the, take the front cap and put that on first. And then from there, you just number them back up. So on the baffles, that one has a one stamped on it. So that goes down first. After that is two. And then you line the teeth up. And there's three, and obviously uh, they, they gradually get larger as you go. So three. This one's four. This one is five. And then we've got the back piece. And the back piece just goes on. From there, the cover back on threaded tighten it down and there we go it is reassembled and kind of sort of maybe kind of all uh, you know like it used to be almost as good as kind of sort of brand new Let's call it that. What do I think about the Surefire Rider 22S? I think that it's got pretty good weight to it. It's not super heavy. Um, definitely help with recoil management of the 22 pistol, which there is none. Um, 
So to use that as an actual, I'm joking. Okay, people don't take that super serious. Um, however, the sound, the reduction in sound, which is what most people think sound suppressors are for, um, definitely helped, okay? Um, so much so that I didn't need any sort of ear protection to sh be able to shoot and it was comfortable. It was not like I was on the verge of it hurting or anything. Very, very comfortable, very manageable sound level to um, be able to tolerate over long periods of time. The big thing that I noticed and that you might have noticed in the video was that when I shot the pistol, particularly unsuppressed, there was just this loud, um, big cloud of white gas that came out of it. Versus once we threw the suppressor on, that cloud of gas, along with the sound, was significantly reduced or suppressed. So, not sure what it would look like at night. I don't predict that it's it's got a lot of flash coming out of that pistol at night, but not to say that there isn't any, which means that this would probably just reduce that even more. As I've said, if you don't have a suppressor yet, I highly suggest, I know, I know it's an investment right now and it's a pain in the butt with the a uh, AFTs, right? Um, yes, I know it's ATF, I'm being smart ass there too. Um, look, here's the way to look at it. If you put your paperwork in today, yeah, it might take 10, 11, 12 months to get it approved. But if you don't put your paperwork in today, guess what? In 10, 11, or 12 months, you could have had one, but instead you held off on getting one because why it's gonna take 10 to 12 months. Well, you know what? Those 10 or 12 months are gonna pass anyway. So why not have something on the books uh, going through the system? Suppressors so far have become something that I am growing much more uh, appreciative of. Not for the cool factor. Don't get me wrong, suppressors are cool. They are very cool. They are a lot of fun to shoot with, but the cool factor is one part of it. The biggest thing is the comfort level. It makes shooting so much more enjoyable. To eliminate the concussive blast, to eliminate um, muzzle flash and all that kind of stuff if you're shooting in the dark. Uh, Guys, these, these things are a game changer, okay? There are tons of options out there. Even if you don't want to drop it on a Surefire, there are other companies out there that make suppressors. Just get your hands on one and you'll start to learn and appreciate exactly what I'm talking about, all right? Um, with that being said, Silencer Shop, again, that's, where I, that's who I'm using uh, to get a lot of my NFA, or all, all my NFA items through and whatnot, um, so be able to check them out. Surefire, great, great suppressors. Every single, every thing that I've gotten from Surefire has been top quality, and there's a reason why I run their lights exclusively and why my first two cans have been from Surefire, and that's because they really are the best in the game. So, um be sure to check them out. Don't let the price tag scare you off. You're gonna get a lot more uh, bang for your buck, or maybe a lot more bang for your buck if you're going through Surefire. But again, there are tons of other companies out there that are making them, so I'm not telling you to um, only stick to Surefire. If you can't afford this, if you have to go with one of the, that's fine. Just get something, because the sooner you get a suppressor on one of your firearms, the sooner you're gonna be able to go, oh, I get it. And then from there on, it's just gonna become like a, all right, I've gotta have one for whatever gun I'm shooting the most at the time because it, if you know, you know, okay? So with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Hope you found it somewhat informative, enjoyable, or anything like that. Uh, please make sure you like, subscribe, hit the notification bell button, and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, also, if you notice that I'm doing anything wrong with cleaning or any, please let me know in the comments because this is, this is a brand new thing for me. Um, so any tips, pointers would absolutely be helpful and um, we'll keep this in mind. It's gonna be another 10, 11, or 12 months before I can do those videos, but I do have some other suppressors coming my way and I am super excited to get those 
um, out of AFT jail whenever they decide to approve them for me. Or if better yet, let's just repeal it all in all because, you know, yeah. Um, but in the meantime, I've got some other videos that uh, I'll be releasing here over the next couple of months. So make sure you stay tuned. And uh, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the range.